today's video, we're going to answer the question, why Canada exports lumber? From this graph, we know that a price of a piece of wood is $10. Very pricey piece of wood, if I say so myself. And that's the price with no trade. And we can see from this graph right away that the intersection shows equilibrium when there is no trade and that the quantity bought equals quantity demanded and that the firms actually produce 40 million pieces of lumber and Canadians actually buy 40 million uh, pieces of lumber to match the, uh, the amount that the firms produce. Now, if we pop in some international trade, world demand and world supply of wood actually determines that the world price of wood be set at $15. So that is reflected in this graph with this red lines, red line uh, set at 15. That is our world price. So with the world price being greater than $10, which is our price before, before that there was international trade, uh, we see that Canada actually has a comparative advantage in wood production. So that's how you know that your own country has a comparative advantage, is that the world price is higher than the equilibrium price for whatever activity that your country is involved in. Now, knowing that the world price is at 15, with international trade, the price actually rises to $15. So we'll just reflect that here. So the world price exceeds uh, it exceeds ten dollars. Canada has comparative advantage, and and the price rises to uh, fifteen dollars. That is what we got so far. Now, at fifteen dollars, uh, the firms what they'll actually do is they'll actually start producing more. So they'll produce uh, they'll produce sixty million pieces of lumber. And I'm just going to make this a dotted line and make it red. And at this new price of $15, that the amount actually bought by the domestic consumers, the Canadians, are actually $20 million. Make that red. So, yeah, just imagine that these lines are straight. You should always make your graphs look beautiful but I'm running short on time, so I'm not going to make them as beautiful. So Canada actually exports, uh, they actually export 40 million, uh, yeah, they actually export 40 million pieces of wood, which is again, a lot of wood. And again, you should make your arrow look beautiful. So the quantity exported is 40 million. The quantity bought is 20 million. The quantity made 60 million. The quantity made actually increased, so the quantity produced increased, as you can see from the supply. Before the supply was 40, but inc increased to increased to 60, and the quantity bought by domestic consumers actually decreased from 40 to 20. So what's left over is actually exported out to different places in the world, and that's that. So now we're going to talk about the winners, the losers, and the net gains from trade. So we know that international trade lowers the price of an imported good, and it raises the price of an exported good. We see the, we've, we've seen this process in the last two graphs that we went through in this video and the last video. Buyers of imported goods benefit from the lower prices. The sellers of exported goods benefits from higher prices. But some people complain about international goods competition. Not everyone gains. So who wins and who loses from international trade is what we're going to try to answer next. And we're going to look at the gains and losses from imports. So this figure shows the market in Canada with no international trade. The total surplus is equal to the sum of the consumer surplus plus producer surplus. And that's all you need to know in this graph. That's graph that is consumer surplus and producer surplus with no international trade. Now, in the next graph, let's pop in some international trade again. So this is Canada with international trade. And we're back looking at the jeans again. The world price is $5 per jeans as we've uh, as we said in the last video. 
Now the consumer surplus with this world price uh, imposed, the consumer surplus expands from A, which is, uh, which is the area of the consumer surplus that we had before. This was the before and this is the after. Consumer surplus expands from A to A plus B plus D, as I've listed here. And consumer surplus, or the producer surplus, actually shrinks. So before the producer surplus was this blue area that I have here. It actually shrinks down to this small little blue area that I have here when we include the world price. So B is transferred from producers, transferred from producers to consumers. And D is an increase in the total surplus. And we also call it a net gain, or it is also the net gain from imports. Now let's take a look at the gains and losses from exports. So again, this is what we have with no international trade. The total surplus is equal to the consumer surplus plus the producer surplus. That's all you need to know from that graph. Now in this graph, that's where we'll pop in some uh, international trade, some, some international trade, some exports. Now we know that the world price of wood is actually $15 now. So the consumer surplus in this case shrinks instead of the producer surplus. So remember this was consumer surplus before. Now the consumer surplus shrinks to this small little area of A. Producer surplus, which we have here before international trade, actually expands to include the area C plus B plus D. So we've already known that consumer surplus shrinks to area A. Producer surplus expands to area C plus B plus D. So what actually happens is B was transferred from the consumers to the producers. And D is actually an increase in total surplus. And again, it is also the net gains from exports instead of imports. And let's just start off with international trade restrictions. So governments restrict international trade to protect domestic producers from competition. And they actually use four sets of tools. They use the tariffs, import quotas, and some other import barriers and export subsidies. And we'll really go into detail with tariffs and import quotas and not so much with other import barriers and export subsidies. But that's for another video. Uh, please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.